Okay, let's get her done here. I think this part's a little bit more open because if you come with a, an ATV, you can get as far as here and there's no way you're getting around that washout. Hoi. Nine point seven five kilometers. Look how nice and well defined this is here, and then it gets grown in a bit, and then I think Yeah, then it's then it's okay. So much further do we have to go? 180 meters. Okay. We can do this. What time is it? A quarter after one. Oh, hey. You can see the size of the cut here. So again, this would all been cut out. All that material, all that that aggregate, all that gravel and stuff that came out of here. And again, we're in a very till area. We're alongside the river. And so over time, this probably would have all been pushed up. And so that would have been used to create those embankments and things like that. And again, one of the reasons why they washed out, right? You I mean, you either have to put some sort of trestle in there or you have to, uh, and it could have been, it could have been a trestle in there or you have to fill them up with stone. It was funny when I was coming this way, I thought this little section here was, oh, this is a little grown in. Yeah, okay. Okay. So here the cutting kind of comes to an end and then we get into a bit of a wet spot here. And on some old maps, can basically see and if I see it on the map I'll flash up the map you can see that there's a I think there's a building on here marked in here and somewhere so again you can see what would have been a culvert here this looks like old beaver in here so apparently there was a building somewhere in here so again not sure what the purpose of that building was if maybe it was more modern and uh, had to do with something with the, you know, logging and stuff that was going on in this, in this area. Again, if you take a look, you see all these poplars here? This is what happens when you log, eh? And so what comes back are the, uh, and that's why they have to reforest, because the species that you don't want don't come back because they're slower to grow. The spruce and the, the pine and stuff are slower to grow and you get all the faster growing stuff like the, like the poplar and the birch. Oh, Nelly, I think I remember this big puddle here. We've been walking for so long, it seems like I was probably here at like 9.30 in the morning. So we're getting close to, um, I think in here, um, I was through here once before, back in 2019. Again, you can see here where there would have been a, a culvert. I was through here in 2019. I walked a little bit, um, not super far. And there's stuff that kind of looks familiar. 
I didn't come this far, I don't think, because this is a really swampy section here. I think I stopped just before the swampy section. Where the heck is the dog going? I'm coming, I'm coming. So impatient. Come on. Come on. So you kind of run the whole gamut here in this in this section here, right? You got these these sections here that are, just watch where I put my feet, you know, are wet and swampy and, and you got these sort of high and dry sections, they're all gravel and you're gonna see some rock cuts coming up. All right, these are really swampy. You can see people have put logs and boards and things like that. Welcome to Northern Ontario. If she ain't rock, she's swamp. Feel it's wet, but you can feel that there's there's gravel underneath. All right, you can kind of feel crunching as you're uh, as you're stepping. Again, it's a lot drier than it normally would be. We had a very unusual spring, uh, unusual winter. Didn't get a ton of snow. It's very, very dry, um, which may be pro problematic. We're, we got some rain. We got some rain yesterday. We're supposed to get some rain tomorrow, um, but nowhere to make up for the deficit. I just, uh, I was looking on social media yesterday and somebody I know had posted something and they were showing their whatever lake that they're at. And they were showing how uh, the dock is like up, like the lake is so low that the dock is up on the, like the dry land. So I think this is where we're getting into where I was when I came in 2019. I'm pretty sure I came this far here. I kind of remember this section here and there's gonna be a culvert. You can see indentations from the ties here. Yeah, I marked. So there's a culvert here. It's way the heck down there, but it looks like, um, like it would have been a wooden box culvert or something. You can see it's all eroded here. The water, it looks like it's still flowing underneath. Look, that's some coal, boys and girls. You know, it's weird what I have an eye for. You can find coal. Can't find other things. Okay, 10.4 kilometers. Whew, I'm moving now. This is gonna be a long series of episodes. Usually like a four mile hike, we can do like in four or five videos, right? Cause we're biking and yeah, not this one. I guess theoretically I could have, I didn't realize how clear it was. Um, we could have probably biked part of this. Then I would have to bring my bike helmet and the bike and that would have been a big pain. Here you can see obviously there's 
probably some sort of box culvert or something underneath here. Something, something is washing out here. Well, with all the logs being thrown in there, you can see there's a bit of a beaver pond. Here you can see the indentations from the ties. You can see the moss. Shotgun shell. We did see a few partridges. The legs are sore. Yet another cutting. Again, it seems almost sad, right? Like, you know, they did all this work to build this railway line, you know, and 20 years after they started building it, it was abandoned, right? But I mean, so goes things. I mean, uh, that's all the nature. If you, if you do some reading on, you know, how this all went down, I mean, when Canadian National Railways was created, they, they inherited a lot of railway lines, right? So you had, Things like the, you know, part of the old NTR system. You had Canadian Northern, you had the Grand Trunk, you had the Intercolonial, right? You had all of these railway lines. And in many cases, because you had different companies, you basically had a lot of duplicated or triplicated rail lines running in the same area, right? So this one, this area here, right? You had uh, basically the Grand Trunk and you had the, um, you know, the, um, you know, the Grand Trunk Pacific and you had the Canadian Northern Line, which were essentially running a lot of the same route, you know, at least up until, um, you know, right up here at where it eventually gets to Conmey Junction. Lots of metal and stuff, lots of discarded stuff you're going to see up here. There's another culvert. Maybe we'll, we'll stop there and you can see all kinds of, gar like, one of the things that bugs me a little bit, right? All kinds of discarded garbage and stuff. But anyway, th yeah, you know, I was just trying to say, Lots of uh, lots of duplicated lines, and, and and there was a lot of work, you know, kind of fixing that over the time and trying to rationalize lines. And you could really say that it took CN up until the like 2000s, right? Because they were still doing that, right? Like, you know, um, you know, this line um, right here. You can see this here, right? You can see all the garbage and stuff that's been dumped right all down here you can see another one of these what probably was a wooden box culvert at some time the water again the water's still flowing through here so um this line here right um i've heard people describe it as useless right because it was a part it was an important part of the grand trunk plan that you know the, the the grand trunk pacific because it gave them access to lake superior right uh and it's funny because one of the big commodities was grain and the uh, the elevator that grand trunk built is still in operation in thunder bay and and we're going to be taking a look at that in uh uh we haven't done it yet but in an, in another episode and and so yeah you mean there, there was a purpose initially but again with you know the, the plethora of railway lines and um this actually was a quite a busy railway line, especially kind of westward traffic for quite a long period of time. There were some, there was grain traffic uh, and then there was, uh, there was some iron mines and things like that that kept it busy. And it, it, it's kind of funny that, you know, when you compare railway lines, so I've done a lot of work on the, the former Kinghorn line and that line literally, you know, was kept around uh, after the construction of the Kena cut off um, because it, uh, you know, it was sort of a, uh, a redundancy, right? Because it, you know, kind of linked up with, uh, you know, connected from the lines coming to the west to Thunder Bay and then connected back up with the main line. Uh, um, this one here had a lot of traffic, but then it just sort of, you know, was shut down like very abruptly, whereas the Kinghorn, you know, kind of really died after the Nikina cutoff was opened in 1924 and just kind of hung around for 80 years, right? Until it was, uh, you know, um, you know, no, no longer viable um, for a variety of different reasons that I'm not going to get into. Here's another one of these culverts. Again, you can see all the debris. There's a barbecue down there, right? Uh, there's another one that I went down and there was like a bazillion tires. Okay, maybe let's, uh, 
let's hold up here for a second uh check the battery and stuff and then we'll keep we'll keep going along <laughs> 